Hi! While browsing on eBay, I came across this. And it's a portable induction wand type thing called a hot rod. And what it does, it uh, if you've got a seized nut on a car or something and you want to heat it up instead of using the old oxyacetylene torch, you just pop this over it, press the button, and then it heats it up instead of using the oxyacetylene. And the advantage is there's no uh, flame. Now this one was advertised as faulty or not working. And it looks pretty much brand new. So I think what we'll do, we'll take it out of the box. We'll plug it in and we'll see what it does. It's quite heavy. And we'll get one of these coil things out here. I think that's about the smallest one. We'll try that one. But all of these look in unused condition. I think I paid around £80 for this. And I think they retail for around about £200. So hopefully we'll be able to repair it. Right, so looks like it's wearing a little LED there. And that's where the wire bit goes into, or the coil. So let's undo those. I'm not sure how far they go in, I think that's about it. Right, I'll get some power. And hopefully it doesn't explode all over my bench. Right, well it's plugged in. Nothing's happening. Right, we'll unplug it. And let's see how it comes apart. I think what we'll do first, we'll just double check that the mains fuse in the plug is intact. So I shall just grab a screwdriver. And we'll just check the terminals as well. Right, so we've got a 13 amp fuse. And the fuse is intact. And uh, thank you to the viewer who said instead of turning your meter off and back on, you can just hit the button there and it comes back on. Because I didn't actually know that. Because uh, I used to use the me old Fluke 77 on previous videos. And I got this one a few months back. So, Right, so how does this come apart then? It looks like we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. About 8 screws around the perimeter. So I'll move this screw thing out of the way so it'll lie a bit flatter and then hopefully we'll be able to get into it so I think it might be quite interesting this one and I've just recently looked at an induction cooker or induction hob as we call them in the UK so we'll see if this works in a similar way I would expect it does I'll unscrew this screw thing as well. Now, how do you come apart? Are there any hidden screws under here? And resume. Right, so if anybody else has one of these and they want to know how to take it apart, under this sticky label here, there's two hidden screws. I don't know why they just didn't do the same as what they did here. That's a bit strange, but anyway, that's what they did. All right, what have we got in here then? I wonder if this block comes out and it's screwed in. So we've got a bridge rectifier here. Looks like some kind of transformer. And some bits of power supply and that stuff on this side. So does this bit want to come out? 
guess that's the main induction transformer there. I don't be careful where I'm putting my fingers on this for the minute because I've had it plugged in recently. Well, I can see an internal fuse there for a start, so let's check that. Right, so the internal fuse is open circuit. Oh. I've just seen a, a spark on there. Yeah, that was just a spark. I'll have to watch back on the video just to see what that was. Right, we've got some big MOSFETs or something over here. Or IGBTs as they could be. I'll tell you what, I'm just going to spin this round so I can get a bit of a better view of it. So I'm not working over the top of the thing here. Nice, right, so and I'll zoom down a bit. Right. Let's see. Well, that's not a good start. Could be why the internal fuse has gone. I don't think we should be getting short circuit on both of those. I might see if I can take this off the case. I think it's going to be easier to work on. I want to see if I can undo these two Allen bolts. So we can get this case out of the way now. Now yeah, with some fragments of plastic in here. So I wonder if this has been dropped and something's shorted out. So that's the power switch. Let's just zoom down a bit and we'll have a look over this circuit board. See if we can see anything obvious that could uh, have caused those to fail. I should probably check the bridge rectifier. So we're going to neutral here. Hmm, yeah, I'm getting a reading there. Bridge rectifier seems okay. I'm not sure what that is. It's got 75 degrees on it, so perhaps that may be a thermal fuse. But these here yeah, are definitely all shorted. Right, 
what's this? That's just the LED. I don't know why we've got four wires. Going to an LED unless it's some kind of RGB one possibly. So it looks like the output of this one comes down here and then goes to this winding of the transformer and then this one comes down here and goes to this winding of the transformer. Well, it doesn't really look a lot in it, there's no microcontroller or anything I can see. I guess that was supposed to be attached. That just looks like a big inductor, I think. So when you see one wire at each end of it. So I'm just wondering if that is a thermal fuse. I'm gonna have, I'm just gonna have a look, see what this is just before I unsold those because if it is a thermal fuse, that doesn't make sense actually. It can't be a thermal fuse, it must be sort of like some kind of temperature sensor or something. Because if it was a thermal fuse, how would you solder it in? Because the solder temperature would be more than 75 degrees. I think it would be alright to solder on that. I can't see it being a fuse. I think it must be some kind of temperature sensor. Right, I think I'm going to unsolder these and then we'll see if we can get a bit better view. I'm just going to put a bit of leaded solder on first. Let's get this meter out of the way. So I wonder what's caused these to fail. I mean it's not usage because it looks like literally a brand new product. So I wonder if there's some other fault further back that's caused the problem. Or if there's something wrong with this transformer here that's caused it to blow the transistors or MOSFETs here. clean up these holes quick. Just in case there's anything in the circuit, but no. Right, so they're definitely blown. So we'll need to order a couple of those for a start. See what this little thing measures. I see. I think this is some kind of temperature sensor. It is measuring short circuit, but I'm gonna to have to look that up just to uh, see if it just opens circuit or resistance or something when it gets to 75 degrees. It might well be the case. Get this out of the way. Let's see if we can see anything a bit better on this board now with the heatsink out of the way. Yeah, so this just looks like a, a big inductor. Just goes from... Looks like the supply. Over to there, so... I guess that's uh, filtering or something perhaps. We do have a small IC down there, I'm not sure what that is. I don't know if we'll be able to see it there. I don't know if I can zoom in any more, I can try. Th 
33151. Right, I'm going to unplug this LED, we'll get that out of the way for now. Alright, so it's got plus and minus, plus and minus, so it must be for two LEDs, so perhaps it's like a status type of thing. So maybe a, a dual colour LED or something, and perhaps it changes colour when it's um, hot or something, or... Right. Let's check these diodes on the front here. Right, well that one measures okay. That one measures okay. That one measures okay. And we've got a load of diodes on the back as well. Right, I'm going to check those as well then. Okay. There's just one more down here if I can be probing. I don't seem to be getting a read on that one. Probably because I've got the meter reads the wrong way around. I couldn't see the stripe on it for the uh, the wire there. You've got a different view from me. <laughs> so all those diodes look okay. Not underneath that capacitor. Not a lot, just a couple of little components. Looks like we've got another IC just under here. I don't know if we can see what that one is. It looks like XD308. And the other one was a 33151. I'll have to look those up and I'll see if I can find any details on those. I mean that one looks like a little switch mode power supply by the look of it. And seeing as there's a 25 volt cap there and an inductor, I would hazard a guess that that's some kind of little power supply. Yeah, because there's the the mains smoother going into it. The inductor. It looks like there's a rectifier diode there and then this is probably the output output capacitor so where are these transistors or whatever driven from it looks like as a track goes that way and the track goes that way I'm just going to check these diodes around about here just in case any of those have failed as well. Yeah, 
Yeah, because when those when those have shorted, it could potentially have sent power back down the gate or base pin to wherever it drives them. Right, you might have to try and trace through this circuit a bit to see exactly where they go to. I thought I'd bring it under the microscope and I've removed the large capacitor which was just across the top here just so we can see a bit better around here. So this chip here is the IGBT driver chip and that's what controls the two IGBTs which are up the top here. But what I'm wondering, has power been fed back down to these points here and blown some of these diodes or even the chip? So I'm just going to measure these diodes here. I'll just switch the meter on. So let's try this one here. Now that's measuring 18 ohms. But across here, if you look from that side of the diode and then follow the trace down, it goes to here. But also this side of the diode goes down here. And yeah, so there's actually an 18 ohm resistor across the diode. So the only way we can check this diode properly is by taking it out and measuring it while it's out of circuit. Oh, we could remove the resistor, but it's just, just as you take the diode out. Let's see if we get the same on this one. Yeah, so we're getting 18 ohms on this one as well, but then again, if you follow this path down, it goes to here, and this one goes to here, which is an 18 ohm resistor. So the only way we can test these properly is to take them out. So let's try these ones. See what reading we get on that one. Actually, I'll put on a diode check, so... Yeah, so that's better. That, that one seems to measure okay. Let's try it the other way. Now we are getting a reading the other way as well, but that might be measuring another diode. So we may have to take those ones out as well, just to double check them. Let's try these. Well, that looks a bit low. And we're getting the same reading both ways, but then again that could be measuring through another resistor as well. Let's try this one. It's almost a dead short that one, so but then again, it could be that we're measuring through a resistor or something here. So, I think the only way to be sure that these diodes are okay is to actually take them out. Uh, let's just check a couple of these transistors here. Let's try that the other way around. So that seems to measure okay. Same with that one. Let's just try this one. So the transistors appear to be okay. It's just these diodes. And I'm going to I said I'm going to replace this chip in any way regardless because if there is a fault on this chip then it's just going to blow the IGBT straight away again so and I don't think they're particularly cheap I think they're about five pound each right I'm going to remove some of these diodes so it looks like those four are the same and that one and that one are the same yeah, because they've got 4P on them, 4PJ2, and these have got WJ on them. Right. Right, so I think I'll start by removing this one first. Right, so that's that one off. And I'll remove the other one from the other side as well. I 
Right, so there's the two diodes that I've just removed. And that one's shorted. Right, that one's given a bit of an odd reading as well. Let's try the other way. Yeah, looks like we're getting the same reading both ways on this one. Not pretty much, so I think they're both faulty. Right, so we need two of those. Right, let's take the other four off then. Right, so let's see what these ones measure. Right, so them ones appear to be okay. Right, so those four are okay, but the other two just here aren't. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to order some parts. I'll order two diodes, the two IGBTs here, and the replacement driver chip, and then we'll fit them. Right, it's been a few days now, and the diodes have arrived i couldn't find the exact part but it appears to be a 15 volt zener diode so i've ordered one of these which hopefully should do the job i managed to get hold of the mosfet driver or in this case what's driving the igbts and the igbts this number here seems to be obsolete now uh, you can't seem you don't seem to be able to order these ones anymore but apparently this is the replacement so i ordered four of these just in case the thing blows up when we power it up so i think the first thing i'll do is remove these and we'll put these new parts in that's probably the easiest thing to do so i'll get the packet open that is Then two numbers together there, it's a bit hard to see with the, the light in here. Well, that one's gonna work better for angle, it maybe. Yeah, H30SR5, that one, and this one's H30R1602. That's all doesn't make a huge difference. Right, I think the next thing I'll do is bring the microscope in and we'll fit the driver chip and the two diodes. So I've just noticed the part I've ordered is the 34151 and the original is the 33151. So I've looked up the data sheet and both of them are actually on the same data sheet. The only difference I can see between them, all the electrical characteristics and everything are the, are the same, is the 3151, the operating temperatures from minus 40 up to 85 degrees C. And on the 34151, it lists the operating temperature as 0 degrees up to plus 70 degrees. So I think that's the only difference between them. So hopefully it should still work. So I'll get this one off. So I'll just 
just heat it up there and add a little bit of flux. I've already refitted the four diodes up there that were removed earlier. Just going to clean that flux off and then put some fresh on. Right, is that the new chip? Yes. I might just touch those up quickly with the iron as well. Just to make sure that they're all soldered in properly. Right, we'll just clean this up a little bit. Alright, just got the two dials to fit now. added a bit of flux to this I can't see the mark on this one now there it is right so I think that's okay Right, now it's all of the MOSFETs and that back in, or the IGBTs rather. Right, so first of all I'm going to solder this capacitor back in. That I removed just so we could uh, see, get a better view. Right, I'm just going to tighten these up. adjustment all right last one to do all right I'll trim the excess legs off all right happy with that I'll just give that a little, little bit of a clean up there So hopefully, ah, one thing that we need to do is change this fuse. That's one thing that I haven't got. Now I think this is a 10 amp fuse, but I haven't got any with the solder legs on. So what I'm planning on doing is just getting a 10 amp fuse and we'll just solder it across the top of this one. I did have a look at the price of these, but they were about five pound each, and I thought, Phew. I thought well, I've got loads of fuses, so we'll just solder one on top. All right, I'll just go and grab a fuse. All right, so back with a couple of fuses. Now, one thing I didn't show you was the old parts compared to the new with the test meter here. So, so here's the old IGBTs. As you can see, short circuit. So short on pretty much between every pin. And if we measure these ones. Let's swap those round. Just me catching the leads together there. So that's the difference between them. And you can see both those are dead short. Right, let's get this fuse soldered on somehow. I want to try putting a bit of solder direct on the fuse first. I'm trying to get it on the same place on the other side of it. 
round things rolling. Right, now it'll be a little bit hot. Get a little bit more down there. Right, that should be fine. Right, there we go. Right, so I think it should be a matter of reassembling it and testing it and hopefully it doesn't blow up. Like you see, it may well be the case yet, yeah, because I don't know why it's blown up in the first place. Is there a, another issue with them? There seem to be a few of these on eBay with uh, the same fault. So has he had a bad batch or something? I'm not too sure. Let's plug this in, which is the LED. And we've got the go switch. Alright, so I won't get the body of the thing. Alright, back with the case. So let's see how this goes back in there. Right, so how does this transformer sit in? goes like that. There's a little groove that the PCB is supposed to sit in. But one of the plastic bits has actually broke off. As it was like when I opened it so that doesn't seem too bad there. see why that bit's there now because it's awfully close to the back of that switch it's not the best design I wonder if that's what's happened I wonder if that's touched there with that being broke and that's what's caused it to fail that's not the best design that I think I'm going to put some hot glue on this bit of insulation stuff here just to hold that in place I'm just zooming so you can see what I mean. So if this had came out the way, then the high voltage could potentially touch those contacts on the switch there. So, and the, the fact that this circuit board, the plastic and that's broken, I just wondered if this has moved out of the way possibly. I'm going to put some hot glue on it just in case. So hopefully that should keep that in place. Alright, let's see if we can get the rest of the case back on now. It's not very well built this thing like. Let's zoom out a touch. Alright, let's see if we can get the top back on. Alright, let's see if I can get a couple of screws in the front just to hold it. I think I should try and sort this cable out first. Right. I'm going to have to try and put some screws in just to hold it while we test it. Right, is a bit easier said than done. I'm not going to put all the screws in until I test it. Right. So, for professional use only, well that's not me then, so I don't know how we're going to test it. Right, I'll just get the uh, electrodes, or whatever you want to call them, heating coil or, or whatever. There we go, I've got one of those. And there should be a couple of thumb screw things. Right, well there's one, and 
as the other. I mean, it's not quite together properly, but like I say, I think we need to test it first and then we'll come back to that one. Right. So, how are we going to test it then? I think I'll just zoom out a fraction more. I'll see if I can find something we can put in the coil here to try and heat up. Uh, I don't know, bolt or something maybe. Right, I have a bolt, so I'll just stick that in the end there. Right, let's see if this is going to go bang or something then. So, fingers crossed. Well, there's a fan, come on. I think it sounds like a jet engine. And the light comes on. Oh, and it's heating up. Tell you what, I'm just going to switch it off a moment. And I'll get the thermal camera out and we can see it heating the bolt up there because otherwise you can't tell if that's hot or not but uh, yeah it did uh, heat up rather quickly so just bear with me two seconds right so I've got the thermal camera set up there and it's saying it's about 19 degrees I'll put the screws back in so let's uh, see what it does oh yeah they can see it glow on there Yeah, that's up to about 110 degrees C there. So yeah, so I think that's it. I'll just switch this off a second. Because it's rather loud. Right, I think uh, that's it. So there we go then, repairing a hot rod. Oh yes, that is rather hot. Ouch. Right, there we go then, repairing a hot rod flameless heat system. Right then, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more like it, please subscribe. Any comments or questions, please leave it in the comment section below. And as always, have a great day. Thanks for watching.